7.05, so I'll go ahead and get started. So to start, just kind of like what actually is Anki. Anki is a, it's a flashcard program that uses an algorithm um, to determine basically when you have to, when, when would the best time be for you to next see a flashcard in order for you to not forget that flashcard. And it does that uh, using how easily or how many times you've gotten that flashcard right or wrong in the past. Um, it spaces out the flashcards so that ones that are tough for you that uh, you have difficulty with, you see more often, ones that you keep getting right gets keeps getting spaced out further and further. Um, so this little curve diagram is something that people who use Anki like love to show because it's, it's supposed to show that how basically any piece of information you learn will forget very quickly unless you see it again or practice it again at some point. But the more you practice it, the more time that you require before you'll start to forget it again. That's kind of like the whole foundation of, of Anki. Um, so there's different uh, ways that people, I think, in med school use Anki. Uh, you'll definitely, some people use it as like their main method of studying, where they put, try to put like everything they think they need to know for any exam into Anki in one way or the other, either through pre-made cards or through cards they're making themselves. Um, and they really only study with Anki as their main thing. Then you'll find people just use it for only certain topics that are like kind of particularly suited for Anki or for memorization, which might be like farm stuff, drugs, anatomy, structure, embryo, things like that. And then also some people just use it as like a little testing feature before an exam. You can make like a, a quick test of flashcards um, that you could also do. Um, so those are different ways. I'm somebody who used it as my, I just kind of slowly work my way up to using it as the primary method um, in second year. And then definitely in third year was my, my main method as well. Um, also, you guys can stop me at any time. Um, if you have questions about anything that I'm saying or if I'm like glossing over something that doesn't make much sense, feel free to, to unmute and interrupt me. Um, so here I kind of put the general pros and cons of Anki and like the kinds of person it, it tends to work for. Um, so Anki kind of it's, gives you like almost like a superpower of your ability to remember things. If you put it into Anki and you do your cards every day, like you will remember the facts that go into it, which is kind of wild. And it's always kind of cool in a study session or something when you you remember a fact that, you know, nobody else knows or that's completely like out of nowhere just because it was in your Anki deck. So it, that's like the one of the big pros of it. Um, it can take away some anxiety from like wondering what to study or if you're going to remember things you've studied because you know that if it's in the deck and you're doing the cards, you will most likely remember everything that's in the cards. Um, and it's, it's good for people who are really organized, who don't mind kind of having to do a set number of uh, cards every single day, um, which can also be kind of a con is that for people who feel like that's kind of burdensome or don't like the idea of being forced to like do these cards every day for the best results, that can be a con too. People who want to have more freedom with their studying. Because um, Anki is definitely more for the organized, like do work every day to avoid cramming as opposed to like the flexibility of uh, being able to study when you want or study more towards the end of the block. Anki would definitely be more towards that, that first one. Um, the other thing about Anki that's kind of a con is that it doesn't really do the learning for you. So it helps you remember anything you've learned, but it's really tough to like just learn something straight on with Anki. So if you, that would be kind of just like brute force memorizing, just doing flashcards that you've never really seen that material before, but you're just trying to memorize the answer to each flashcard um, takes a very long time. And doesn't work too great. So you kind of have to um, get used to finding a way of learning material that works for you. And that can be through through pearls, through uh, lectures, through reviewing notes, that can be through like boards and beyond videos, whatever like your method of learning is, is great. And then Anki will help you remember one, what you learned once you kind of understand it, but it really can't do the understanding part for you, um, if that makes sense. So here I just put in some of the definitions that I'll, like, I'll throw out um, during the talk. Is So a close is just the Anki word for fill in the blank. Um, and I put a sentence there. That's how that first sentence is how it will look when you're adding a card or editing a card. That's just like the programming way that Anki displays a fill in the blank. And then the second sentence on the right is going to be what it looks like when you actually review the card. Like that dot, dot, dot is the fill in the blank. Suspending and unsuspending is just turning cards on or off. So like adding them into your rotation, basically. So once you unsuspend them or turn them on, you're like telling Anki uh, these cards, I want to like, I want the algorithm to start using these cards and telling me when I have to see them. Um, and then 
The next three are just ty types of cards. So blue cards are new cards. Those are ones that you just unsuspended and you're just doing them for the first time. Learning cards are relatively new. You've only seen them like once or twice, or you've recently got them wrong. So they go back into the red pile or the learning pile. And then reviews are the green cards. Um, those are cards that you've seen a few times and, and have gotten, right? And the colors just show up at the, but when you're reviewing, they'll be at the bottom of the page showing you like how many of each of those types of cards you have. Any questions about any of that so far? No. Okay. Um, so here I just, I just kind of screenshotted my settings to put in. Um, in case for people who have never used Anki before, you kind of have to change the default settings a bit because they they can be kind of annoying. So um, the settings have like little uh, descriptors if you hover over the I button that explains what they do. But the most important thing is just generally the, the learning steps. I don't think you, you can see my cursor, but it's under like new cards um, and under, yeah, under new cards, the learning steps where it says five minutes in one day or a 5M 1D, that just means that uh, the first, when you get a card wrong, that's the first number is the amount of time before you, the algorithm will say you have to see it again. So if you get a card wrong, I'll have to see it again five minutes later. And then if I get a card right the first time, I'll see it again the next day. So that's the, the second number where it says one day. Um, the default makes you see a card like twice on the same day, which ends up like doubling your workload, which is just too much for in medical school. So you want to make sure it looks like that. Um, and then my car, my settings are really similar to uh, the Anking settings. So if you spend like enough time looking into Anki stuff, you'll hear about Anking, who's this, it's like an organization now or a whole group of people who got really into Anki um, and like made one of the biggest, uh, most used pre-made decks and definitely and has like a ton of videos online that like get people introduced to Anki and get people going with it. These are the settings that he recommends. It looks a little different because it was before they updated like the display of the options. But these are very similar to mine. I think he just has his learning steps. If you see all the way on the left like panel, he has 25 and 1440. Um, 25 means is 25 minutes when you get a card wrong. And then 1440 is still just one day. So I think the most important thing is that you have um, one day as like your second step for when you get a card correct, a new card correct. You want to see it one day later. I'm also gonna throw up my email at the end of this PowerPoint. And if you guys have any questions, like when you're like setting settings up or with Anki at all, feel free to shoot me an email. I'm happy to answer anything. I submitted my residency app earlier this week. So I'm totally open to answer any questions about Anki. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the pre-made decks. So the, the biggest and kind of the best one is definitely the Anking deck, which you can find just by Googling Anking like latest edition, or I have the link here actually. Um, it takes you to like a Reddit thread that has the deck in it. Um, that deck is like based, it's like 40,000 cards, a crazy number of cards. It has cards on like pretty much anything you could think of related to medical school, but it's mostly tailored towards boards heavy topics. So generally like any topic that shows up in first aid or that people talk about as being something that would show up on step one or step two would be something that is probably extensively covered by Anking. Obviously for our curriculum at Hofstra, there's a lot of things that we learn that is not like just for the boards. So some of that stuff might also be an onking, but some of it might not, uh, like especially structure tends to be more heavily tested by Hofstra than is in the onking deck. So that might be, there are certain areas you might, you might think about making your own cards if you're somebody who really likes onky would be structure. And then also some large groups are kind of hit or miss. A lot of the time, the large groups will have a ton of cards in onking that cover it, um, but sometimes they don't. So just something to keep in mind. And yeah, so it's based on the resources that Anking uses our first aid, Pathoma, Boards and Beyond, um, and a lot of other stuff too, but mostly Boards, boards resources. I have um, a quick question. Yeah, go ahead, please. So in your case, have you mainly been using pre-made decks, making your own decks, or a mix of both? Yep, that's a great question. So I like kind of gradually transitioned. I started out just using Anking, um, like got it really into that for a while, and that kept me going pretty much and I was making my own cards a little bit, like for structure, for picture, like um, picture flashcards where you can like cover a part of an image for like anatomy, which I'll show you guys how to do. Um, but I wasn't really making that many most of my first year. And then at, at the start of second year, I shifted to making a lot more of my own cards and stopped using Anking. It was during the HMI block, like micro block. I just felt like there were, there were too many pre-made cards for me to keep up with from that deck. Um, so I started just making my own based off of the lecture slides, mostly like based on Dr. Um, 
what, what like the two uh, course directors, like their um, their slides for HMI. And then I, I stuck with making my own cards after that for HC, um, for IE, and for in third year, I made all my own, like my only way of studying really during third year was to just make my own cards from New World Questions, um, if that helps at all. So yeah, I feel like I have experience using Onking initially, um, but then I shifted to making my own. Um, so here I talked a little about like the benefits of each. Um, so the, mo I think most students, especially in my class, used a pre-made deck, used Onking. Um, and the benefits of that are that like, they're all, they're definitely really high quality cards. It's much, much less labor intensive to just add someone else, like add the cards from that deck. And they're really easy to find like based on topics. Um, the cons of the pre-made deck is just that there's so many cards that it can become overwhelming if you add too many. But I would say that like, especially for you guys, since step one is pass fail, you don't really have the need to do all the cards in that deck where I feel like people in my class kind of thought like, oh, we need to do all these cards if we're gonna be ready for step one. But I feel like for you guys, you can pick and choose the topics that are like most helpful to you. So I think that's like a huge benefit of step one being pass fail is that you don't have to worry as much about if you're using Anki, the cards being overwhelmed, overwhelming, because you can always just get rid of ones that seem not useful to you at all in your in your curriculum or don't seem like helpful. Um, and then so making your own, I'll say, I think it's really, really hard at first. There's like a huge uh, learning curve to like making your own. At the, in the beginning, you might like make too many cards. You might make cards on things that aren't very important. Um, so that can be tough. But once you get the hang of it, it I think it really is like it's a great way of learning because when you make your own cards you actually do learn the material while you're making it which i think like leads to a really good understanding of the material which i really like um but it kind of takes time to get to that point where you feel comfortable recognizing like the most important information from a, a lecture or a session and making as few cards as possible about that so you don't get like overwhelmed uh, but i'll talk more about pre-made like making your own cards at the end any questions about any of that Um, so my initial like just sentence on making your own cards is that you want to try to make it as simple as like possible when you make your own cards. You really want to keep, like try to use the fill in the blank style or the closed style um, and try to avoid like long question and answer type things. Really try and distill like any card down to just a few words or one phrase in that fill in the blank. Uh, it's something that I had a lot of trouble with when I started doing that. Like I would make my cards too big, like too many words and make too many cards. But the more you can make it as simple as possible, the more you'll be able to like actually do the Anki and not get overwhelmed by it. Um, so I put a link in here that's to like a, a list of rules that can help you make like quote unquote good flashcards or, or flashcards that are easy to remember and simple to go through um, that I used when I, made, when I started to make my own. Um, so now I wanted to like take a break and just take you guys into the actual program and like go around in there and show um, different things that we can do in Anki. I'll pull that up. Do you typically stay on top of like the Anki software updates? Because I know not all the add-ons will like work for the newest version. So like, when do you decide to update your Anki? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so there was a, a lot of really big updates recently that changed a lot of how Anki works. I generally just update it like when it comes, um, unless I know there's an add-on I need that's going to be ruined. But that's never really happened for me, to be honest. So I just, um, I feel like they've been adding a lot of really good new features. So I just update it when I see that there's a new one. Okay. Can you guys see my, my Anki screen right now? Yep. Okay, so I'll start just by showing like browse, so like how to find cards. So you click on that browse button, it brings up this tab here. Um, so then if you this is would be specifically if you're using Anki, and let's say you just had a lecture on, let's say congestive heart failure. Um, so Anki is all organized by tags. Oh wait, I don't actually have, this is the profile without Anki, I'm sorry, I have to switch over. Uh, Sorry guys, this is like the profile I use, but I haven't used Anki in a long time, so it's not here. Um, so I saw that like, cause I recently updated mine. Um, and so like the different profiles, is that just for like, like maybe when you're doing step one, you have one profile and step two is another profile. 
you could do that. You don't really have to. It's just really for like different, it's like totally different Anki desktops, the profiles. So if you're like okay. one person using Anki, you can just use one profile. Um, yeah, so I, I have like everything I use is just on the one profile. This was just one that I put Anki in just because it's so huge. I didn't want it like going up all my like tags and stuff if I don't really use it. I'm only using it like for the, the demo. Um, so here's Anki. So you can see it has like all these tags. Um, the tags are organized by resource. So like by, uh, you can see here like first aid and then it's every chapter of first aid, which is a really good way of like finding a topic because first aid is organized really well. Um, if you're going off a specific video that you want to look for cards are on, there's boards and beyond tags that are tagged off of, I think every boards and beyond video. Same is true for Pathoma. And they, they've even added like a lot more tags since I used Onking. When I used it, I mainly just used the first aid tags because I felt like those were really well organized. And generally there's like a first aid blurb on like every major topic in medicine. So let's say you just had a lecture on like congestive heart failure. You could go to under the Onking tags over here first aid, cardiovascular, pathology, and let's see if they have heart failure down here. So let's say the lecture was about all of heart failure. You could add all of these cards by doing like select all, which is command A on Mac, and then you can do command J to unsuspend them. Um, so now those, these cards all just got turned on. You could also go more in depth because he has even more tags under heart failure, basic, like all these little things and you could pick and choose. Um, or you can even look through the cards yourself over here um, just to see which of these cards you think um, apply to you and like would be helpful. Like, are these things that were talked about in the lecture? Are these things that you think are important or have to know about heart failure? But generally it's pretty hard to go through all of them like that. So what I think is a better way of doing it is just unsuspend all, like add all of a given topic. And then as you're going through the actual reviewer, you can suspend while you're doing the cards. So then you can get rid of cards that seem like pointless or not good. So I'll, I'll go through that now. So to start like reviewing, you can see we have like 80 news in the Onking deck now. So you just click on it, click study. This is what it looks like. These are the closed cards. Um, you hit the space bar to tell you the answer. Um, and let's say I look at this and I think this card is pointless to me for whatever reason. I've never, like I had a whole lecture on heart failure and nobody mentioned BNP and how it's used to distinguish congestive heart failure from ARDS. So let's say I, I think that I'm like, I don't need to know this, waste of my time. You can hit shift two um, and that suspends the cards. That turns it off. You'll never see it again. So that's the way I like to go through cards and determine like which is by like unsuspending a given topic. And then as you're going through them, you can suspend or just, if I thought that was a good card, I would hit either good or again, depending on if I knew it and start the whole process of adding that card into my rotation. Um, does that make sense? So is that like the shift to, can you also get to it from the edit button down at the bottom left? Or is yeah, it I think it's in more, I think more okay. suspend over here. Yeah, more suspend. It's like the app button, shift to. Okay. Um, so that can do that as well. Um, so that's a good way of like finding cards and adding them. Let me see what other things I'd wanna show you guys. Um, this is like, you can edit cards in this section down here. You can see my cursor now, right guys? I think you should be able to. Yeah. And I think the, the lecture notes section is a really good, if you're using Onking, you can add in extra information here that kind of like personalizes the card. Obviously you can't do this for every card, but you'll come across cards that like don't really make sense to you or they maybe contradict something someone said, like a teacher said, or it relates to something that a faculty person said. So then if any of that happens and you wanna like really remember that thing, you could add in the lecture notes. So in my Onking deck, like I would have like, Dr. K said like, this is extremely important or like um, a way that that card might relate to something like very important that a Hostra uh, faculty has emphasized. Um, you can even throw in like screenshots of, of slides and put them in here. Um, if, and that's a way you can kind of like personalize Onking to make it more specific to the Hofstra curriculum um, because Onking is gonna be by default, like just really mostly information for, for boards. And sometimes, most of the time, that will overlap a good bit with things we learn at, at Hofstra, but sometimes it won't, and you'll want to like have extra information. Um, so that's that. Um, you can also talk a little bit about like adding cards. This is like the add function. I'll show you guys how to do image occlusion while I'm here. So image occlusion is, is an add-on. Um, to get add-ons, you go from the main screen, tools, add-ons, and then you'll have to just Google the name of an add-on. Um, and the first link that comes up will be like an Anki web link for that add-on. At the bottom of the page, there'll be a number in a blue box. 
you just copy and paste that number and then you put it into here where it says install add-on. Um, and I have a list in my slides back there, a list of the add-ons that I think are, are pretty useful. Um, so image occlusion is one of them. Um, when you have image occlusion, let me just, I'll screenshot like just the Anki thing. And then you go to card type image occlusion. You click this button here and you have to, so first thing you do is you'll, you have to screenshot or like copy whatever image you want to make uh, flashcards from. Once it's like on your clipboard, you go to the, this add area, click the button here, that little picture, um, and it should bring up the picture you copied. Um, and then you just click and drag to cover up any of that image. And every cover you make will be a new flashcard that Anki will add. Um, so let's say for, I mean, this is not a real picture, but this is just based on the, the Anki thing. But if I wanted to cover up this, you could cover it up like this. And then the card would be basically asking you what's behind this header. So it's really good for anatomy because you can put these masks or like the covers over the explanations of, of like certain structures that you wanna remember uh, and you can do it that way, which is really helpful. Once you make the mask or you can make a few, all these would be like separate cards that they would ask you. You click a uh, hide all guess one at the bottom and that makes the cards you can see over there. Um, so yeah, if you wanna tag these cards as you're making them, you would put the tag in here before you click the um, picture button up there. Tagging is just a way of organizing your own card. So I could have called this like my deck images, or something like that. And then when I click up here, all the cards I made off that image would have that tag. So it's better organized. Um, I'll also show you guys how to just add a regular card. So you can go to the close here um, and you like write out your sentence. I'll say like furosemide. Okay. And let's say you wanted to, you weren't sure what type of, you want to remember what type of diuretic it is. You would highlight that word. You can click the button up here, or you can do um, Command Shift C, and that makes a new close there. That's gonna be a fill in the blank. And you can put multiple fill in the blanks on a single sentence. So you can do uh, this would be two separate cards off the same one. Um, and this, the second one doesn't really make much sense because it's just closing, it's making a fill in the blank from furosemide, but there are multiple loop diuretics. So you could give yourself a hint to like figure out what you're even asking of this. So to do a hint, you put two colons after the word, and then you put in a specific question or something or a hint that will pop up when you look at that card. So for example, with this one, I would say like most common. So this would make two separate cards. One would have a fill in the blank over here and the other would have a fill in the blank here for furosemide, but it would also prompt you with most common. So you know that the question's asking what's the most common loop diuretic, um, if that makes sense. So that's adding cards. I'm just gonna glance back at my PowerPoint and see what else I wanted to show you guys. We showed editing, add-ons, navigating the browser. Um, a filtered deck I might save for the end because that's just a little more advanced and can be a little confusing. Um, and, quick, yeah, go sorry. ahead. No, please, um, please ask away. For, um, cause we're in BI now, so we're getting into a lot of like that mechanism stuff. Would you recommend yeah. more doing like different closes? So you get like different cards where they're blanking out different steps of the mechanism or more of like the image occlusion? That's a great question. It depends. If you have a great picture that like shows the, the full mechanism perfectly, you could definitely use image occlusion for that. Um, I tend not to do that. I tend to use images mainly just for like I would say mainly anatomy stuff. Like I don't really do images for like tables or for mechanisms as much. Um, although in FTB, I did definitely for the, like the enzyme pathways and stuff. I would use images for that for sure. Um, but for mechanisms, what I actually tend to do, and this is something I, I was gonna talk about a bit later, but I'll show you guys now is when I'm making my own cards, um, what I like to do is put the big picture image of like the entire mechanism. And that can be either like an image of it or it could be a screenshot of the PowerPoint of the slides, like talking about the all the steps. I put that in the extra section down here. So the extra section can hold like any related information for your cards that you want. And I feel like that's, it's really important for putting like the big picture information because you want your flashcards to be like the most small, like minute bricks of knowledge. And then the extra could be like the whole big picture. What do those, what's the point of, of that? So, and then what Aki lets you do is you click this pin button over here or toggle sticky, it says, um, and you can just leave whatever you wrote there. So I'll say like, here's big picture stuff. And then this will be, 
but you can see you can make a, let's say the big picture stuff would be everything you're making cards off of for that given moment so it would be like a, a screenshot showing the entire mechanism and then you can make separate cards of each step of that mechanism um, up here and then as you make the card so we'll do like made a close here and then you click control enter to make, to add it you see like that disappears because you just made a new card but the extra stuff all stays because you put the the sticky on so that's kind of like how i work whenever i do any make my cards i always put like a big chunk of information that i want to like make anki cards from in the extra and then i make my cards off that in the text section and just like as i go i'm pulling stuff you can copy and paste stuff from the extra into the text to do that um does that make sense yes thank you yeah no problem um so here are some tips I just threw in that I, I mentioned already that it really helps to learn before you memorize. Unless you're kind of making your own cards, then making your cards is kind of like going to force you to learn it, just to think about like, oh, what's important? How can I word this question? How can I get the most info from this slide? So that's like, but if you're using pre-mades, it's really important to like watch a video, um, take, you know, take notes on a lecture, look at your notes before you try to memorize that info from a pre-made deck. Um, I also put I think if you're using pre-made cards, like 60 to 80 is a good way to limit yourself if you're adding new cards every day. If you're adding them only some days, then obviously you just average it out to 60 to 80 a day, but that'll get you to a pretty high number of cards per day. So I, I think I always limited myself to 80, and I was probably, when I was doing Onking, had to do like an hour to two hours of reviews a day at the peak of like having done that for a year and a half or so. Um, and then if you're using pre-made cards, you definitely want to make less than that. If you can try to add like 40 to 60 or even less um, if you're using, if you're making your own, sorry. Um, and then I also put in here that you don't need to do every single Onkin card on a given topic. You should really try to be sparing and only like keep doing Onkin cards that are really relatable, like relate to what you're learning. Um, don't like feel free to just suspend ones that you think are useless that you see and you're like, I've never heard of this, or this is just a random like boards fact that I don't need to know. You can just get rid of it. But you'll find that a lot of the facts in Onking are actually really relevant for um, for what we learn. Definitely. I also put a slide here of, of different shortcuts you can use in the windows. This is just like information, not much to describe here, but we talked about a lot of these already. It just kind of helps with your efficiency in terms of using Anki. Um, this is more kind of just like functional stuff of how you can search in browse mode. Um, so I'll show you guys that quickly. You can see my screen again. So a cool thing you can do in browse is let's say you wanted to pull up all the cards with multiple tags. So let's see, I had a lecture on, we'll say heart failure, but also cardiomyopathy. So you click the heart failure tab, this brings up all the cards with that. But then if you click uh, shift plus, like just tapping on the other tag you want, so shift and then click cardiomyopathies, now it's bringing up in my main panel will show both of those tags. So you can, now, now I could unsuspend all of those from, from those two topics. Um, and if you wanted to look at cards that are only present from like within two tags, like if they share both tags, then you can do command click. Um, so this, these shows you the only five cards or six cards that, that have both of those tags. So like it's looking at the overlap and that's with command rather than shift. So shift would be like, shows you all the cards with both tags and you can do that with multiple tags too. You can keep clicking shift click aortic dissection. Now I also added in all the cards with aortic dissection. So that's kind of a helpful tip too, in terms of using the browse while you're browsing. Um, okay, here are the add-ons I recommend. There aren't that many because Anki has updated so much. It, it kind of like, it made all the best add-ons into like base features of Anki. Like the whole tags thing I just showed you, that all used to be an add-on. Um, the only one I really recommend is just image occlusion if you want to make cards based on images. Um, Amboss has an add-on for Anki that like is pretty cool if you like Amboss. It links all, like I'll show you. Um, it basically lets you link any uh, flash card you have to, yeah, sorry, these are all I just made. So like it gives you this underline here and then it pulls in Amboss information based on that thing. So that's like a really cool thing that can be just helpful if you're if you're really into Anki to using that, but you need an Amboss subscription, uh, which is pretty expensive. So, but I like Amboss for a lot of other reasons too. Um, Anki is free on the computer, but it costs 25 bucks on the phone, um, which I think is really helpful for rotations and stuff in third year. If you're using Anki, you definitely want to have it on the go. Um, and then I put 
what I described before, how to actually get the add-ons, like the step-by-step -step is in the notes below this slide. But if there's any questions about that, like once again, feel free to, to ask me now or email me. Um, so that's pretty much it that I had in terms of the pre-made stuff. I made a couple more slides about making your own cards. Um, that has some stuff that I already touched on already too. But I wanted to stop and ask, are there any questions from people who, if you guys are just mostly using pre-made, any questions at all about, about that or, or anything I've said so far? So you mentioned that like you used Onking initially. Is there like any like, I don't know, like pre-made decks from like previous Zucker students? That's a really good question. Um, I don't know about that. I know, so I made like structure cards that I would share with the class, like at the, in the week or so leading up with RA week, just in case anyone wanted to use them to study. And I think I, I heard from people at one point that like those structure decks circulated a bit, but I don't really, I'm not sure, like if, especially now it's like three years out, if anyone still uses those at all, um, okay. those would only be for certain blocks. People after me might've like taken up that and tried to make like, Def, like more comprehensive ones for certain blocks. Um, me and my friends tried to make like a sh like, like contribute together to share and make a deck for a block, which did, which was tough to do. But um, but yeah, I don't know if anyone else has done that. So I'm I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, unfortunately. All good. Um, and then for the on cake, so because like step one's like pass fail, would you recommend like even for like step one not going through all thirty thousand cards? Yeah, definitely. I would definitely not do all 30,000. I think that's, that's kind of crazy. I would say, um, I don't think you need to do it for, for step to do to pass step one. Certainly. I think it's the overkill. So I would say you should use it, um, like your own measure of like wh whether or not you feel like it's too much, it's starting to bother you doing too much Anki every day. I would say if you like, you can use it for the Hofstra exams. Definitely. You could choose to keep up with your cards after the Hofstra exams from each previous block. Cause that will definitely help you like, past step one easily if you do that. Um, I feel like a lot of the a lot of the concerns of like not passing step one comes from like not reviewing previous material as you like get closer to it. Um, but I you also I feel like don't necessarily have to do that. You could get rid of the cards after each block and just start each block fresh. Although I think like I said, keeping up with the cards definitely helped me for step one immensely. But I don't think you have to do all of Anking cards. I would just pick and choose topics that are especially relevant to um, to the Hofstra um, exams. And then if you want to keep up with those, that will definitely help you for step one. And you can try and add in extra topics too that, that seem like helpful as you're going along, but I just wouldn't overdo it. Like I wouldn't, the example I always use is like lysosomal storage diseases are like the most horrible thing ever. There's like 200 Anki cards in them in Anking. So I would just not put yourself through memorizing all of that and then keeping up with those cards for like a year just for step one is because it's pass fail. Um, I would say what I did was, even I didn't memorize those cards. I just looked at the lysosomal storage disease table and first aid like two days before my exam. And I think there's a, there's a bunch of topics that are like that, that are just like very, very fact heavy that Hofstra will never ask you like an essay question. I mean, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but they'll never ask you like an essay question specifically about like which enzyme is deficient in lysosomal storage diseases. So, and make you like force you to memorize like 200 pieces of information just to get that question right. Um, so I would say it's very like not, not high yield for, for you guys that would be my thought, but that's just one thought. Okay. And another question. Oh, um, so I don't have the Amboss add on, but there okay. was another one I, I added recently where it was like, you can, it makes it easier to like Google search the word. I forget what it was called. It was like browse, browse search or like browse term or something like that. It was like a, it's like a relatively newer add on. Yeah, I'm not sure if I know that one. Um, I had like a, I had something vaguely similar to that, but then I think I turned it off when I got Amboss because Amboss kind of does that. But I think if, if, if there's something that does that for free and if you're not somebody who wants to get Amboss, it could be a good option, but yeah, I don't really know that much about it. And then I was also wondering, it's so like, we're starting like genetics right now. Yeah. So let's say go back two years and you're starting or three years and you're starting the I with this. Um, so would you unsuspend all of your genetics cards from the Onking deck or can you set it so you like unsuspend 80 each day? Yeah, so if you set your, in the settings, if you set your maximum number of news to 80, 
you'll only be able to do 80 news a day, which will like limit you so you don't like do too many cards. And then I would definitely recommend unsuspending only by topic. So it's like, if you had a, a genetics lecture today on RNA, I would, after you feel like you've reviewed the notes, like you understand what Dr. Lucido said, if Dr. Lucido is still teaching PI, hopefully, yes. um, <laughs> then um, you can unsuspend, like go find the tag specifically on RNA or tRNA or whatever the most specific thing is and only do those cards. Cause I feel like you'll drive yourself crazy if you start adding cards from stuff that you haven't learned about whatsoever. Like haven't watched a video on, haven't heard about in class. And then you try to force yourself to memorize it. It's just, I think kind of pointless. Okay. And then you said to change the, um, like the timing or the frequency with like doing it again, you didn't know it and like, yeah, was, you can just, if you if you just want to like use the settings that I have in my slides, I think that will do you fine. And then even on King settings are almost exactly the same. Um, okay. But the key thing is to just make sure that when you click good on a new card, you don't see it again until the next day, because the default <laughs> settings make you see it like twice in the same day, and that's too much. I think it's. Too much. So does that mean? Like the next day you're gonna have like 160 cards. Yes, that's a really key thing to know about Anki is like any new cards you do today, you will see tomorrow. So that's like something to keep in mind. If like you're super busy the next day or something, maybe you shouldn't add like 150 cards that day or something crazy like that. Because an Anki is like the number of cards goes up, even though they space out over time, you're still seeing those cards again and again and again. So if you do 60 a day, you'll probably end up doing like 300 to 400 maybe reviews a day after like a month or two of adding 60 new cards every single day, the number of reviews will work its way up and up and up. But then it eventually levels off somewhere around, if it's 60 news, it levels off, I think around 300 or 400. Um, if it's a hundred news, it levels off at like 500, which is a lot, definitely. So then do you separate it? Because like when I took the MCAT, I separated it with like, you know, Kempfiz and, you know, Orgo and what psych -soch. um so how do you separate the cards in Anki because like we have I mean like pearl structure and PPS and that type of stuff but do you just do like like all of your cards under one section yeah so if I was if I was making my own cards I would separate them by tags just so I like knew where to find certain cards but when I do cards I would never separate them I would just keep them all in the same deck because I feel like it just keeps you on your toes so I would, I would keep it in like on king I wouldn't separate I would just leave it as on king and like just do all your onking cards in one sitting. And if you're making your own, I would probably recommend making, you could make a deck for each block. So those are separate at least, but within the block, I don't think you have to separate it based on parallel structure. I would like, if you're gonna tag the cards to organize it, you can tag it based on that. But I wouldn't make like separate sub decks for every kind of component of the curriculum, if that makes sense. Okay. I have more questions, but if y'all have anything, please jump in. You can continue for now. Um, I'm fine. <laughs> um, oh, now I gotta remember the question. Oh, so I saw that like Anki does, uh, like on your day when you have like review cards, it'll do your review cards first and then new cards last. And mm -hmm. then I saw that there's an add-on that you can. So you dropped out. You're dropping out for a bit. The audio. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, um, I saw that there was an add-on that makes it so the new cards are first and the review cards are last. Would you recommend that add-on or do you always say like, because they're like, oh, if you can't do the whole deck, it's better to prioritize new material than review material? So I think with the new update, I think you don't need an add-on. Like, I think that's a setting oh. in the, oh, let me see if it's over here. But I think you can change the settings now to show like whether you want, what order you want them to show up in. And it's all down here, display order. So you can make it random. You can make it in the order that it, like the cards were made. You can make it in um, like what order you want. I think um, I personally, I'm trying to think what I did. My order was always, this is before, before I even had this option with the old one. I think I set it to just show me, I think it was oldest cards first, but it wasn't a, I mean, I, I feel like ideally with Anki, you're doing all your reviews every day. So it really right. should be a question of like, um, which ones you're not going to get to because you really have to get to the, them all like pretty much every day or else they just pile up more and more, which is kind of crazy. And if you're not getting yeah. to them, then you probably should be adding less new cards because um, because the new cards are what's going to keep piling on and on. Um, so I would say personally, I don't think it makes a huge difference what order you do the cards in, like what, what order they show up in. Um, but I like to do my 
news like, like after I've done all my reviews. Like I like to just get all my reviews out of the way. And then, cause news are generally a little harder. Like you are going to get them wrong a lot cause they're new cards, but, um, and you have to like, yeah, like learn the cards a bit, but reviews like go fast and it's very predictable. Like once you get a sense of how long it takes you to do your reviews, it's very predictable. So I like to do my reviews first. Okay, so I do have a question. I know for people who are very like deep into Anki, they often like get a remote and they talk about how helpful that is. Uh, can you just talk a bit about that? I'm not too familiar with Anki, but I know it's a thing um, people like to use. Yeah, no, it's a great question. I, I'm probably one of the few people who's like super into Anki, but never got the remote. I don't know why. It just didn't, for me, I, I didn't do it. But yeah, people like to use it. I don't, I think Anking has a great video. If you just Google Anking, um, rem like Anki remote, he'll explain how to do it. I don't actually know specifically how to do it because I never did. I would use my phone or my iPad for like, if I wanted to do Anki while I was like on the treadmill or on the, like working out or something like that. But otherwise, um, yeah, I never used the remote, but I, I can imagine it's, it's helpful. You can like sit comfortably looking at a TV or something. Sorry, I can't be more helpful with that one. No, that's fine. That donking video. Um, I think he explains it pretty well. So I have the phone app because it's free for Androids. Um, cool. Uh, cool. But it's a, I always get like messed up with like, because uh, you have to have the Anki web account as well in order to have it on your phone. Yes. In order for it to link correctly. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't remember. Do you like, I were doing cards on my laptop and I was about to get up and go and I was like, oh, I'm going to go take the subway and I want to do Anki off the subway. Um, I would have to first open up Anki web and then correlate it all and download from the program to Anki web and then Anki web to my phone. Yeah, so you, you shouldn't have to go into Anki web ever as long as you sign, once you create the Anki web profile and you've signed that profile on the computer and on your phone, then you like do your cards on one, one of them and you just click the sync button when you're done. It's like before you close the app, before you close your computer, just click the sync button. And then when you open the app on the other device, click the sync button and it will be totally synced up. That's like how it works. So as long as you do that, it makes it really convenient. So like, um, yeah, if that makes okay. sense. You shouldn't have to yeah. go to like Anki web, the web app and do anything in there. Um, okay. Yeah, as long as you signed into both of those things on your two devices and then like, once you finish doing cards on one device, you click sync. And before you start doing cards on the other device, and then you're good to go. And then do you ever use the heat map add-on? Heat map? No. Heat map is like, does it, what is it? It shows you how many cards you did on a given day or actually I never used it, but I know that um, I'll show you guys my Anki has like the stats button now, which I think does show the heat map to some degree, maybe, maybe I not. Think it does. So then, yeah, it's, I never felt a need for it because I, I have that, but I'll show you my, Let's see how I haven't done it. So I, that's the other thing is I haven't really been doing Anki um, for fourth year. You don't really have to do it once you finish step two, which is pretty awesome. Um, but see, so yeah, my stats will be. I just wanted to see if it shows um, like what I did in the past. But no, it doesn't really show it far back enough. Here's my heat map, actually. Yeah. So you can see all the Anki I did leading up to step two, which I took somewhere over here. Um, in June, and then I stopped doing Anki for since then, which has been wonderful, I will say. But yeah, so this is a, that's the heat map, right? So I, I don't think I need. I never like used it. The only okay. reason this deck has so many cards is I unsuspended them all, like to show you guys today. But I haven't done this is my main like third year deck that I did for step two, and I haven't done any cards in it in months since step two. Uh, any other questions? I can, I have like a couple more slides about make, like tips for making your own cards, but they kind of go into the weeds a bit. So I don't want to, I didn't want to like, if we have more like basic questions or beginner questions, feel free to shoot now before I, I talk more about that. I guess um, for unsuspending cards um, using Onking, would you typically do it at the beginning of a block or would you do it like, cause I mean, we had a, a pearl case on like CF and then like later on the week we're having one on down syndrome and then we have, in a couple of weeks, retinoblastoma, and then we get into like cancer and everything. And so would you just unsuspend, like when we get into the two weeks of cancer, we should probably wait until then to unsuspend those cards. 
Yeah. So I would always unsuspend as soon, once you've like learned the topic. So whatever that means for you. So it's like you could, let's say you have like a CF pearls case. You can look at the um, look at the Anki cards tagged under CF. Um, look and see like how many there are, like how doable they are. You could try it, and then you're gonna go through your pearls learning, whatever that is for you, like watching videos, reading textbooks, whatever you like to do to learn the material. And then if you have the time, you could unsuspend the cards and do them even before pearls. But for me, usually that wasn't really doable, so I would usually do them like the day of. So like then, um, maybe I would have time, but but I would probably like have all my knowledge that I learned going into pearls discuss it at Pearls, and then that night I would be doing all those new cards about CF. But I think it's, it's good to, you want to keep those like tied as closely as possible. Like when you learn something, you want to try to be doing all your news on that topic like that day or like the day before after you did pre-work or something, like when you're learning about it. Because doing, even though I, I said like obviously you want to learn the cards before you do them, you want like that learning to be fresh in your head and if you just watch the video and then do the Anki cards, that will help like facilitate you learning that material really, really well. Or if you just okay. talked about it in Pearls that morning and then that night you're doing all the Anki cards. Uh, also, if you do all the Anki cards in a topic before you go to Pearls, you just seem like a wizard who knows everything and it's kind of crazy. But, but it's really hard to do that because the um, it's a lot of like, it's hard to learn, do all your Pearls work and then also do 80 cards about CF on top of all that. So you don't have to do that by any means. Okay, so then like, um, how would it work if I unspend, unsuspend um, like 100 CF cards, but I only get eight cards each day. So then there's 20 left over, but then the next day I also suspend 80 um, cards on transcription. Is it gonna give me 20, the 20 left over with CF and then 60 from transcription? Yeah, or exactly, that's exactly what it will do. And it will keep doing that until you like stop until you add few enough news for it to even out, but that's what it will do. Um, it should, and I think there's probably a setting for that that like make sure they, you can choose, make them appear in that order. But for me, they always appear in that order. Like the ones you added most, uh, like longest ago will show up before the ones you just unsuspended today. Um, but but like I said, that's, a, that's always a good, like if you, if you unsuspended a hundred onking cards on CF, as you're going through them, you could probably suspend like 20 to 30 of them because they're repetitive or you don't think they're like that useful and keep the ones that are really useful to you. And you can get that number down to like 70 or something. Um, Cause you really don't want to be adding more news, like more than 80 unsuspending more than 80 news a day because mm -hmm. it's going to keep piling up and you don't, and the more it piles up, the more it's going to like push apart the time period from when you learn something to when you're doing the cards, which like I was, as I was saying, it's good to keep that time period short. So it's fresh in your mind. Mm -hmm. So like, that's another thing with like this curriculum, like, yes, it was a case with CF, but the majority of it was based on like Mendelian genetics and autosomal recessive diseases. So my issue would be like, how do I know what CF cards to suspend? Because it's not really on CF. It's really about, you know, genetics, but looking through the lens of CF. Yeah, exactly. So you would unsuspend probably the cards on like the topics like on CF, but then you would also probably look at the ideal LOs and see if the LOs are like shouting out any other major topics that you are, that you see listed in, in like on key. This is assuming like you're doing pre-made obviously. Then you'll, mm -hmm. um, so the LO might say Mendelian, like learn Mendelian, Mendelian genetics. And I bet you that Anking has a, has a tag on Mendelian genetics too. And it might say something else like learn um, other like, um, other certain category of genetic diseases like trinucleotide repeat. And then Anking will have a, cop, a, a a whole cluster of those. So not just the one disease that you, um, what's the pearls case on, but then like you can look at the LOs and find other Anking topics in there. And then there also might just be some weird LOs that aren't in Anking at all. And you could just like write a quick note to yourself on like what your pearls group or what you and your study group thinks that LO is talking about. So you know about it, but it might not have a corresponding topic in, in Anken, mm -hmm. which will happen definitely for anything more that's like more communication style or ethics style, like LOs, and things like that will probably not be in, in Anken, obviously. But. Okay. I did notice like on our, the practice NBME exam, it did have like ethics questions, but it doesn't have it on Anki. Oh, so there are tons of ethics stuff on the boards, especially step two, there's like tons and tons. And there probably is stuff in Anking. But I guess I was just saying it's it's not going to match up like perfectly to the 
what the Hofstra ethics curriculum is. So that stuff might be better to, um, you can always look through the cards. I'm sure he has tags on, on ethics, but it's probably better to just like base it off the, what the Hofstra teachers are emphasizing and what the LOs say for things like that. Okay, so you typically use the Onking for um, pearls and large group mm -hmm. review. Okay. Yep. And then for structure, Anki, Anki's kind of like Onking, I think is kind of hit or miss. Like I think some people use it for structure and they like it, but I think that our curriculum is more in depth on structure than it goes into an Onking. So I mm -hmm. like to make my own cards from the, uh, the PowerPoints, the PowerPoints and the images. Um, and if you can get friends who are interested in Anki to like help share that, that burden of like making slides, uh, making cards from the, the structure things, that can be cool too. And you can share the cards with each other um, and like have a shared deck, but that does kind of go a little bit into the weeds of the details of like Anki and syncing with different decks and stuff like that, which is kind of crazy. Okay. All right, I don't want to go too over time. So I'm just going to quickly go through these last few slides. I did talk about a, lot, a few of these things already. Um, so for making your own cards, I just wanted to demonstrate that thing I said about the pinned area and like the extra info earlier. So you can see that like, this is a card I made. I think this was based off a of world question, but I put like a table with the a bunch of like facts about the condition and like the that little paragraph in the extra is like what U World has as like the educational objective, which is like the U World's like short takeaway from that question. So I put that there. And then I make my, I pin that info. So that info will stay in that extra section. And I make my cards in the text section based on the info down there that I think is whatever I want to take out of that and remember. Um, so that's like kind of showing that. Um, in terms of resources for making your own cards, you can make resources based on like whatever you want. Like, it, but I think for the, for like, it could be based on whatever resources you use to learn. Um, but I think generally it's, best if you're making them for Hofstra exams to base them off the PowerPoints um, that the lecturers have, have put out. Um, and then in terms of number of cards, just like trying to make as few cards as possible if you're making your own, because it takes a lot of time to make cards. And then you still, you also have to do the cards that you make. So it's really good to like try to hone it down into the most important info that you're making cards from. And you can always put as much info as you want in the extra section. So you can put copy and paste like whole slides, whole paragraphs of info that like you think is interesting, but it's probably not like the key takeaway from it. And then the text or the card section will be like just on the key takeaway from all that info. Um, because I know for me, like I would always just find myself making cards on everything because you think you have to know everything, but you really only have to know like a few key takeaways and then everything else is like background info or the extra info that is helpful, but it's not like must know stuff. Um, and then the last thing I want to touch on was just in terms of like lecture, lecture, structure, pearls, making your own cards. It's definitely, I think structure facilitates making your own cards really, really well because they're short PowerPoints. They have like key takeaways in the slides usually. Um, and they have images, which are all really easy to make Aki cards from. Lecture topics are sometimes good for making your own cards um depending on like the lecturer and the quality of the slides um but also but sometimes lecture topics are better just to get pre-made cards from because they match up perfectly with like a uh, uh a first aid topic or a boards topic like I'm, I'm thinking of like we had a lecture on the immunodeficiencies in ie like the primary immunodeficiencies and that lecture was literally like word for word or not word for word but was very very similar to the first aid info on that and Onking like covered it perfectly. Like if you did all the cards from that, you knew every single piece of information from that lecture. But sometimes that won't be the case. Sometimes we'll have lectures on things that just really aren't covered in Onking at all. So you might want to make your own based on that. Um, and then pearls, it can be tough to make your own too, just because you're doing the research and everything before you have the ideal LOs. So you want, you're probably going to wait to make your Anki cards until, um, after like once the ideal LOs come out or you're making it based on what you research, not necessarily what the school won't like put in the LOs. So for, I think pearls, sometimes it's better to use the pre-made too, um, if that makes sense. But I made my own cards based on pearls for some blocks and it worked well. Like I think as long as you are making, like getting the key takeaways from your pearls discussion into Anki, it'll work um, based on your notes, but it can be a little tougher just because you're not, you're kind of, there's like an intermediary, like you're making your cards based on your research which might be different than what the ideal LOs are compared to a lecture and structure where you're making your cards literally from the slides. So you know it's exactly what they said. And then when you make your own cards, I said like close is the best, probably the best style to use. 
Um, I put in here what I already showed you guys, which is just like how it, it looks in the thing and how you can make them by putting the, the different closes. We talked about hints already, which I think I have on the next slide too. Um, so hints just let you kind of make a prompt or a trigger for a given question. So it lets you kind of personalize um, a given fill in the blank. Even if like that information isn't in the rest of the sentence, you can still like have a direct question um, using a hint. Um, so I showed a pretty similar to what I had showed you guys before, but so you can see like you can, you can make the hint mechanism of action. So you know that this card is at, this is how the card will appear. If you put it in like this after the colons, it'll look like this. And then you'll know this card is asking you, okay, what's the mechanism of action of furosemide? As opposed to if you didn't have that hint, it would just say furosemide is a dot, 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 which is not the most helpful thing because furosemide, that, that could be answered by a lot of things. So you want to make your cards like simple and really specific. So you know what you're asking when you go through them. Um, I talked about the sticky function and like pinning it. So you can put your big picture information in the extra section, pin that, and then make multiple cards based off of it. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, we're just about at time too. Um, here are just some extra like resources for information. And then you guys are totally free to reach out to me. You can also like send, if you know other people who have questions about Anki, uh, you can feel free to send them along my email. They can reach out to me too. Um, or send them the slides, anything like that. I think this is being recorded also, so they could look at that also. Um, but yeah, any other questions now? Uh, thank you guys for, for your time, and I hope this was helpful. Do you know where we'll have access to the slides? That's a good question. I emailed them to uh, Amber Chess, so I think she should have them. But if not, you can just shoot me an email, and I, I can email them to you also. Okay. Perfect. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Anything else? I was just going to say thank you as well. I thought it was super helpful um, trying to use Anki for BI because I'm terrible with like memory. So it really helped for the MCAT. So I'm trying to do it as well. But I just know like if I have to make my own cards, I won't do it. So yeah, I think Anki can be like really overwhelming and scary at first, but it I think it's really worth it. And if you put in the time to get a little familiar with it, it will pay off a lot in the long run. My advice would be like if you're because I started out fresh with it in BI and I found it very overwhelming initially in BI. I would say try to like focus mainly on keep doing what worked for you in CPR and what's been working for you in BI, but like slowly introduce Anki for the topics that are like really like useful. So like for drugs, for things that are like perfectly covered in Anki. Like if you have a pearls thing, you look at the IDLOs and the IDLOs match up perfectly to Anki, then go for that. But you can kind of ease yourself into it a bit and not like go full on like only using Anki until you get a little more comfortable with it because it is uh, has a bit of a learning curve. And all right, I'll end it now. Have a great night. Thank you guys for, for your time and uh, let right. me know any other questions. Thank you. It was very helpful. I'm glad. Thank I still love you. you all. All right, bye. Bye.